Silica gel is a non-toxic, chemically inert, synthetic form of silica, which is commonly used for the passive preservation of archaeological collections. For the purpose of this video, we will be discussing the storage systems employed here at the Mac Lab, not its exhibit uses. Although silica gel works primarily as a desiccant, the goal for our collections here at the Mac Lab is not to provide rigid environmental controls. This just isn't practical given the sheer size of our collection and our staffing resources. Instead, we use silica gel as a buffering agent. This reduces the abruptness of any environmental swings and therefore reduces the impact of any environmental changes working on the artifacts. Available to purchase either as cartridges or sachets, which are very convenient, uh, however, loose silica gel is less expensive and more versatile. Loose silica gel is available in either a bead or a granular form, but here at the Mac Lab, we actually prefer the bead form as it produces less dust. There are two categories of silica gel that are commonly used in collections. There are the high performance buffers that act between 0 and 70% RH, and this includes some of the name brands like Artsorb, Rapid Gel, Prosorb. And then there are the A-type buffers, which act between 0 and 50% RH. And while the high-performance gels work better at the 50 and 60% range, the A-type buffers either have the same or better performance when acting lower than 30%. And because most of the microenvironments made here at the Mac Lab are for metal artifacts that need the lower RH, we actually end up using the A-type silica gel, which is less expensive and performs within the required range. When deciding how much to use, you can use the manufacturer's online calculators to estimate the amount that you're going to need, but keep in mind that those calculators don't take into account the unique variations in your institutions, like your container leakage or the ambient environment or any particularly sensitive artifacts. So my personal rule of thumb would be to use one third of the empty space within your enclosures. So if you have a Tupperware container such as this, you are looking at the empty space that is not being occupied by your artifacts. Likewise, the empty space inside your multiple layers of poly bags. After a period of time, the silica gel will absorb as much water as it can and will no longer function as a buffer. Indicating beads are an easy and effective means to determine when silica gel needs to be removed and reconditioned. So a small portion of color indicating beads can be mixed in with the traditional silica gel beads. Because the indicating gel beads are more expensive, you only need to use a very small percentage. We're only using them as a visual key. So the cobalt chloride is a very popular color indicator and it ranges between blue to pink, but it is a carcinogen, so always handle using a dust mask and gloves. A more environmentally conscious alternative is the orange indicating beads, which turn to green. They are both non-toxic and pollution-free. When the indicator changes color, it's a sign that it's time to regenerate the silica. Uh, you can also use a humidity strip in the microenvironment to tell when the silica gel has absorbed as much moisture as it can, but really you want to look for the color indicator, the cobalt or the orange color. When it's time to regenerate your silica gel, you want to use a dedicated convention oven or even a toaster oven, but whatever oven you use, you want to make sure it's a non-food dedicated oven. You want to lay the silica flat in the tray that you're using. And for our purposes, we have different kinds of silica gel from multiple suppliers over the years. So we have some of the bead and some of the granular forms. You want to mix those in within each other so that they cook evenly. If you're not sure how long you should be cooking your silica gel for, a safe estimate is seven hours at 220. It really depends on what kind of oven you're using to regenerate your silica. It might be more or less time than seven hours. You just have to keep an eye on it and see how it's cooking. Make sure it's evenly cooking throughout the tray that you're using. When it comes time to cool your silica gel, you can either leave it in the oven or take the hot beads and transfer them into a sealed container. The idea is to keep your silica gel in a closed environment. If you keep it out in the open, it will actually suck up all the moisture in the surrounding environment and then it will be time to regenerate again. So we use two kinds of buffer microenvironments at the Mac Lab. The first is a triple bag environment. We usually use a 13 by 18 bag with a six by six of regenerated silica gel. The other kind of microenvironment that we use is a Rubbermaid container. In this Rubbermaid, we have a six by six bag, mostly lying flat. You want to lie the silica bag flat so it has the greatest amount of surface area available to interact with the, all the space in here. You can also use a humidity strip. 
This is a good sign if you just want to peek on the side of the Rubbermaid to see if you need to regenerate the silica and see if the indicator has changed color. But really what you want to rely on is the color indicator within your silica gel. When setting up your buffer microenvironment, you will always want to handle silica gel with a pair of gloves and also a dust mask as the silica gel can produce dust that you can breathe in. Uh, for your six by six bag, before filling it up with silica gel, we recommend going through and punching holes from top to bottom so that the silica gel can interact with all the moisture within the triple bag environment. The tools that you can use for poking those holes is something that's a little sharp. So we have this thing, which is great. We have a dental tool or even a sharp pair of tweezers. Now for your triple bag um, environment, all three bags, you do not want to poke a hole through in order to seal everything inside, protecting the artifacts and keeping them stable.